Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Marissa Jones, and I am currently interning at the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, more specifically working with the Division of Natural Heritage. I'm also an environmental master's student at the University of Illinois Springfield, and my graduate research is consisting of a mark and recapture study of the mud puppy in an effort to gather um, more specific baseline data about the species population size within Robert Allerton Park. Oh, I apologize, I wasn't in presentation mode. For this research, I surveyed four different sites, one of which was previously surveyed by district heritage biologist, Eric Smith in 2016. Um, I also chose to highlight that with a red marker on the map to indicate which of these four sites was previously surveyed. The other three are indicated with white markers, and those are the three new sites that I chose to survey as they're located downstream from Smith's site that he surveyed in 2016. Um, I chose to sample multiple locations as it would allow me to estimate more site-specific densities and allow for potential movement between these locations. I trapped for a total of six weeks, trapping from Tuesdays to Fridays, and I trapped for three weeks at the beginning of the winter season as the water temperatures began to drop. And then I also trapped at the end of the winter season as these water temperatures began to rise. Overall, it's ideal for trapping to occur um, when these temps are below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> More specifically, um, with the intention of having these split trapping seasons, um, I came with the hypothesis to see if there was any relation between the catch rate as well as the fluctuating wa water temperatures as we move from one season into the next. More specifically, I used a combination of collapsible hoop traps and rectangular minnow traps that can be seen up in the top right corner for comparison. These were set from the bank and baited with either sardines or chicken livers. And they were set um, at, with 10 traps at each of the four sites for a total of 40 traps each week. I set the traps at least 10 to 20 meters apart, but above all, I was emphasizing on placing them in locations near potential refuge, such as tree roots, fallen tree limbs, as well as log jams. As previously stated, the traps were set for three nights each week, and then all captured individuals were weighed, measured, sexed, pit tags, and then tail notched. The tail notch serves two purposes, one as a secondary indicator of a recaptured individual should on the rare occasion the pit tag fall out or be rejected. Um, secondly, for a use of a tissue sample and um, using them for DNA analyses to determine if there's any genetic relation between individuals. Um, finally, we measured the water depth, water temperatures, stream and stream widths in regards to the placement of each trap. December trapping results resulted in seven newly captured individuals, while March resulted in 29 newly captured individuals and one recaptured individual. The one recaptured is distinguished with the color red in the bar graph and illustrates the total number of individuals captured per day. Though I did not find a direct relationship between the catch rates and water temperatures, I did identify a link between catch rates and water discharge rates. Upon looking at the discharge rate of the Sangamon River in the bottom left graph, my capture rate appears to follow a similar trend. I hypothesize with the increased flow rates that there's also an increase in the availability of food and above all the accessibility to the food um, as it's um, moving freely in the water. Um, which then we see as a feeding frenzy or a significant increase in catch rates as we did on March 19th and captured 12 individuals in one day. So after, after having ca captured only one individual, recaptured one individual, I'm sorry, I'm unable to draw a significant population estimate of the mud puppies without, within Allerton Park. 
However, this research has still proved significant in helping to refine mud puppy sampling protocols and also contributed to the overall conservation of the species. I apologize that I wasn't able to provide a more detailed analysis or additional statistics regarding the research, but as Michael and Amber had previously emphasized, working near a river certainly presents its challenges. And in my case, the high waters certainly limited my access to the traps within these final two days of the project. I actually wasn't able to collect all of my remaining traps until just yesterday. So it didn't quite leave me a large enough window to run all of that um, useful data. But all overall, the data from this research will support a future proposal for a state wildlife grant to fund environmental DNA surveys for both the mud puppy and the salamander mussel. Given that the mud puppy is the obligate host of the salamander mussel, the eDNA surveys will be completed in an effort to understand both of their population sizes as well as their distribution across Illinois. This concludes my presentation and I thank you all for watching.